DCP Player Free. Get it now from digital.net.au. Before I bring the others up, I wanted to uh, uh, take a couple of minutes to, to tee up uh, the, the conversation that I'd like to have. Um, while I was preparing my presentation, I've been working on this now for, uh, for a few weeks trying to figure out what, what to put up here. And the, the theme is crystal ball, but um, I have this kind of overwhelming sense of, of pessimism uh, that comes that despite the effort that we put in for quite some time, as Dave has pointed out, um, we still continue to see only marginal use of the SMPTE digital cinema package, and the long-planned retirement of the Interop DCP, which has been predicted every year now for the last five or six years, continues to go off into the future, to the point that, in fact, even the, the dreaded naming convention has continued to receive updates in the meantime, so it shows no, shows no sign of, of, of moving away. So while the theme is crystal ball, I, I, I have to admit that I'm going to hijack the, this a little bit. My crystal ball, when it comes to predicting how we're going to see the technologies we've been talking about all weekend move into the future, is clouded by the slow uptake of the work that we've done so far. Uh, so rather than focus on new things, I'd like to figure out how we can get the things that we've already put together more commonly out into the field and, 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 and used uh, more widely. So um, uh, I'll, I'll go through briefly uh, and, uh, and, and raise some highlights, um, but my, my main point here is that the standards of 2010 won't be widely used until 2020 if we keep on the track that we're currently on. It's the big green one. Is it the big green one, Joel? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. The hamster gets shocked and then the hamster pushes the button on the computer. <laughs> So um, after taking a breath, uh, you know, we had quite a bit of activity in the early years, and uh, we actually finally published the original 429-2 operational constraints in 2009. And then we didn't do a lot for a couple of years because that was a lot to absorb and we had things to do. DCI compliance was just getting underway. But around 2012, things started to get interesting, and now 21DC has produced six new standards in the last two years. And there are several more that are actually already in the process of being, uh, uh, being published. So uh, quite a bit of, bit of work is being done, and a lot of this work is being done to answer uh, demands that we are hearing from groups like this audience. Um, we uh, introduced frame rates for high, uh, high frame rate um, uh, based on the successful rollout of, uh, of Hobbit. We've been working increasingly on sound format uh, uh, upgrades. Um, but you know we're, we're moving along, the DCP is maturing nicely and things look pretty good, but we still have this problem where if you take the average distribution, the percentage of SMPTE DCPs being distributed compared to the percentage of interop DCPs, it's incredibly small, it doesn't even fit on the slide. <laughs> Thanks to Dolby Atmos and Dolby's insistence that uh, SMPTE DCP be used, we now have a ray of hope. <laughs> so, there is a chance to move forward, but it's a blip. And, and like the release of Avatar um, and its, uh, its effect on the uptake of 3D in cinemas, the release of Atmos is, is almost a special venue situation. When, an, when a, a distributor uh, is preparing to ship film uh, with an Atmos uh, mix, they know, or ship a DCP with an Atmos mix, they know they have to be in sync with the theater, that the theater has the right equipment, that their, their software is up to date, and that they're actually going to be able to take that DCP. You cannot just make one of these things and send it anywhere. It won't necessarily work in most of those places. So um, we have this issue that the, the um, and even with Atmos coming out, we, we've discovered that the SMPTE DCP, because it isn't widely used, it is therefore not widely tested. And so we've, uh, through the ISDCF plug fests, we've managed to keep the fire on the manufacturers and make sure that, that we are testing new features as regularly as we can, but nothing is going to test this system like actually using it in the real world. But we need the SMPTE DCP in order to move forward. If we want new sound formats, we want to move to high dynamic range, uh, we want to move to, um, we would like to get away from, I, I know the studio people are going to look forward to the day when we can get away from having to do special picture versions with 3D subtitles burned in, uh, because 3D subtitles are only just now becoming available. But we're not going to get there 
uh, except on a kind of special venue case, as I've said, unless we find some way to uh, make it more available, uh, make more available this, these changes in technology that are, that are being incorporated into new versions of software by server vendors uh, uh, every year. And in fact, we, we run the risk now that if we don't start to see more uptake of these, we're going to run into, I don't know if uh, Leon's mentioned several times, uh, uh, Snowflake workflow. I'm afraid we're headed to the land of Snowflake DCP, and I don't think that that would be a very good place to hang out. So the solution to our problem is regular upgrades. But regular upgrades don't seem to be in the plan for a lot of theaters, and they have very good reasons in some cases for doing that. Upgrades are risky. Um, they, it, you risk potentially having your theater uh, uh, become unavailable uh, just before you were about to make money in it. Um, they cost money. It takes somebody uh, who actually has experience to upgrade the system uh, to keep track of which upgrades to apply. Um, and in general, the, the, it represents a liability to theaters that the smaller the theater is more likely to uh, serve as a disincentive to keeping up with the status of upgrades in the field. So uh, and unlike a hardware failure, which you can kind of uh, plug your ears and, and sing along, and, and if it fails, it fails, and you, you take care of that. An upgrade is one of those things where you actually push the button that sealed your doom. And so most people, I think, are, are, are reluctant to do that unless they feel like they have a, uh, a, a sure outcome. So I would like to bring up my panelists and have a conversation about how we're going to get past this. Um, Jim Whittlesey, uh, recently liberated from Deluxe Digital Cinema, uh, was in charge of their mastering operation for a very long time and has a great deal of uh, experience with what it takes to actually uh, uh, put a distribution into thousands of theaters without any knowledge of what actual software versions exist in them. Uh, the same is also true of Nick Mitchell, uh, Vice President of Technology of Technicolor Digital Cinema. Uh, I'd also like to invite Martin Gardner, Managing Director of Digital, a developer of digital cinema technology uh, in Australia. And uh, because really this is about the exhibitors, I'm very fortunate to have an exhibitor uh, be available to us. Steve Herring is the CEO of Living Room Theater, uh, a boutique theater operation, can I say that, in, in North America. I'm going to sit down now because I can. 